Okay, so in this video, we will solve the following linear system in two equations and four variables, x1, x2, x3, x4. Now, indexing variables is very useful if you have a large number of variables. We could have used here x, y, z, and w. But what if we have a system with, say, a thousand variables? We're running out of letters. So when you start having a lot of variables, then you start indexing them. So as it's always, we construct the corresponding augmented matrix. We will keep the order as it is, so x1, x2, x3, x4. And we'll try and get in the leftmost column a leading one in the top row. Now if you notice, this is a trick we've used before, we could here do row 2 minus row 1, because 3 minus 1 is 1, 3 minus 2 is 1, and then by swapping the two rows, we would get a leading one in the top row. But if you notice also, every coefficient in the first row is divisible by 2. So here we can multiply row 1 by 1 half, get our first leading one that way, because this will not introduce any fraction. So we'll go ahead with this. We'll do one half of row one. We can recopy row two as we're not changing it. If you multiply row one by one half, you get one, negative one, two, three, one. Now we have our leading one in the top row. We'll kill the entry below it by doing row 2 minus 3 row 1. Recopy the first row as we are not changing it. Let's apply the row operation. 3 minus 3 is 0. Negative 3 minus 3 times negative 1 is plus 3 gives us also 0. 4 minus 3 times 2 4 minus 6, negative 2. 8 minus 3 times 3, 8 minus 9, negative 1. And 0 minus 3 times 1, 0 minus 3, negative 3. So we have our first leading 1, we've killed all the entries below it. So we ignore that row, and we repeat. We can't get the leading 1 here, neither here. Here's our first non-zero entry. The only way to turn this into a leading 1, as it is a single entry is to multiply the row by negative one half. So we do negative one half of row two, and we obtain our second leading one this way. We recopy row one, multiply by negative one half, we have our second leading one, positive one half, positive three half. And now we are done with Gaussian elimination. We have reached the final row of our augmented matrix. The matrix now is in row echelon form. But if you notice, two variables are actually free. x2 is free, x4 is free. Because we have free variables, we will not apply Gauss-Jordan elimination. And the idea, as always, is to introduce from the last leading one zeros above of every leading one. So to kill off this 2, we will simply do row 1 minus 2, row 2. We can recopy row 2, we're not changing it. apply the operation, so 1 minus 0, 1, negative 1 minus 0, negative 1, 2 minus 2, 0, 3 minus 2 times 1 half, which is 1, 3 minus 1 is 2, 1 minus 2 times 3 half, which is 3, 1 minus 3, negative 2. So every entry above this leading one is 0, 
we move to the next leading one, there's nothing above it, and so we're done with Gauss-Jordan elimination. As the matrix now isn't reduced where it's on form, we can write the final solution set quite easily, and it will already be in simplified form. The variables were x1, x2, x3, and x4. As always, we handle the free variables. So x2 is free, so it can take on any real value. It becomes a parameter, so we could say x3 equals r. x4 is also free. We could call x4 s or t. Any letter will do, so we'll use t. We have to be explicit about this, that r and t can range over all real values. And now we solve for the leading variables. Let us solve for x3 using its corresponding leading 1. So x3 will equal 3 half. There's a positive 1 half x4, which is 1 half t. If you send this on the other side of the equality, this becomes a negative 1 half t. We can now solve for x1 using its corresponding leading 1. So x1 equals negative 2. There's a 2x4, which is a 2t, on the left. On the right, it becomes a negative 2t. And there's also a negative x2, which is a negative r. On the right, becomes a positive r. And now we have our solution set. If you notice, though, we can do a little better. As t here is multiplied by 1 half, and so we can replace t by 2t, and this will get rid of this fraction. Not a big improvement, but we'll do it nonetheless. So as we've said, replacing t by 2t, x3 will become 3 half minus 2t over 2 is just t, so 3 half minus t. There's no t here, and we'll leave r alone because r is not multiplied by any fraction, so x2 stays r. Then x1 is minus 2, minus 2 times, well, we have replaced t by 2t, so minus 2 times 2t, minus 4t, plus r, which stays r, and there you have it, our solution set. Having replaced t by 2t, we kill off this fraction. And again, we state that r and t can take on any real value. And that's it. Here's our solution set in the best possible form.